interview with uh, Shamrock Rovers head coach, manager, what do you call yourself these days? <laughs> I've been called Wars Tony, whatever you want. <laughs> interview with Stephen Bradley ahead of the new season. And Stephen, you come into it, uh, four in a row champions, five in a row is the obvious target. And um, how are you shaping up for, for the season ahead? Yeah, I think we're in good shape. Um, we like the, the group that we have. Um, we've recruited what we wanted to recruit. Um, we've obviously retained what we wanted to retain. Um, and we feel it's a nice balance to the group this year. It's fresh, uh, it's young, uh, has different dynamics to what I had last year. And uh, yeah, I think we're, we're in a good place right now. Five in a row is unprecedented. I mean, to equal a record of that great team of the 80s was something special. Um, but to go to five, that is a great target, isn't it? Yeah, it's amazing to have ourselves in this position to try and get the next one, which is obviously five, um, and that's going to be the target. We know it's going to be difficult. Um, we know we're there to be shot at. We know everyone wants to take us down, and, and that's what comes with being successful. So um, we're looking forward to that challenge as well. Um, but look, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll take each week as it comes, and, and we understand and know what the prize could be at the end of it. Pre-season you could call it but the President's Cup was a, a very impressive victory against the St Pat's team that had won the Cup and will be sure to challenge you this season Yeah I'm sure they will be there or thereabouts come the end of the season um, but like I said when, you, when you're playing them games you, you want to get a feel for where you are mentally and physically um, going into the season and, and uh, we liked uh, some signs that we've seen in the game that we feel like there's obviously a lot more to come when we get sharper and fitter as the season goes but we like the signs that we see and to say that we're ready for Dundalk uh, this week. Josh Honan made a, an impression, immediate impression you might say, uh, on his full debut for Shamrock Rovers. Yeah, look, we're not surprised because we've watched uh, Josh closely for the last 12 months and, and uh, we, we've seen his quality, we've seen what he has. Um, we know where we can improve him and help him. Uh, but we're not one be surprised that, that he showed what he showed on, on Friday night. And, it's on the staff for Josh, there's, there's a lot more to come, he's a really high ceiling and um, we feel that we can help him achieve that here. So it means that competition for places, particularly in that midfield now, is going to be very interesting to watch. Yeah, but that's, that's what we've built towards, it's taken us time to get to a, to a place where the squad is really strong. We've had to build that throughout the years by being successful and, and selling players and then uh, reinvesting back into the group and, and as a result you get to a point where we are now. Any successful team or group needs uh, competition. They needs people that are pushing each other daily for places. And uh, that brings that competitive edge. And, and thankfully, we have that right now. Shamrock Rovers, though, is a place where players are, it seems, happy to come back to. Um, I mean, Trevor Clark was very good, obviously, at the, at the weekend as well. Uh, but Aaron McIniff coming back, how big a boost is that for the club? I think it's really important that we do our business right when the players are leaving, that we... We understand where we are in the, in the food chain regarding uh, selling players and, and it's really important when that happens that you don't stand in the player's way. You, you want to get the best value possible for your club and that's only right. But it's really important that you respect the player's wishes to, to leave at that point in time. Uh, and if you do your business right and help them, uh, you want to be part of it again at some point. And thankfully we've got players back at really good stages in their career and, uh, and players that are really, really important for us. It's, it's brilliant to have uh, Aaron back. We know the impact he has really looking forward to getting him on the pitch and, and seeing that quality again. And Marcus Poom as well of course? Yeah, Marcus is a, is a top one. I think we've seen after the first four or five months last year when he when he settled into how we play and our culture and it was a big change for Marcus but uh, I think we've seen uh, what he brings to the group. He, he's an experienced international player um, and he gives us a real balance, a real calmness when he plays. He's got real quality um, that can really hurt the opposition from all over the pitch and you only have to explain uh, a tactical change to Marcus once or twice and, and, and he understands and gets him. And when you have that in the middle of the pitch, it's really helpful to, to uh, marshal the team. He's not the only international in the squad, of course. Uh, Pico Lopez performed particularly well in the African Cup of Nations in the last few weeks. Yeah, I've said already, we, we should be incredibly proud of Pico. Um, not just this club, but the league. I think he represented us on and off the pitch like Pico does. An you know, incredible person and player. Um, it's crazy to think he came in here as someone who had worked in a bank and was part-time and, and now he's the most capped player to play in the league and, and uh, that's all credit to Pico. He, he's a um, tremendous professional from day one. He wanted to improve, he wanted to pick your brains on how he could get better. He leaves uh, no stone unturned in, um, 
his desire to get better and, and like I said to achieve what he's achieved so far is incredible but there's, there's much more to come from him Are there more players in Gemma Grover is likely to become internationals in the, in the recent future? Well that's the hope I think we've had seven now um, in, in our time here at the club in charge so uh, that is the hope um, to have more that come through and, and uh, become full internationals and, and it's our job to try and help them um, and try and improve them and, and get them to the stage where they're ready to play at that level You've won the league four years in a row. You, you coach international standard players. Are you disappointed that you weren't in the conversation for the Irish manager's job? Ah, look, I, I understand where that conversation has gone and, and why it's gone that way. Um, and look, I'll just keep working and, and uh, whatever may be for me will be. Um, I'm, but is that an ambition of yours? Oh, look, I want to manage at the highest level possible. I've made no secret of that. And that's, that's my ambition. Um, but I always say to players, uh, don't be in a rush to get somewhere, learn and, and, and be better. And when, when the right opportunity comes, um, you're in a much better position and you're ready for it. And right now, uh, my job is to keep improving this group, keep improving myself. And, um, and in time, we'll see what will be for me. Do you feel, though, that under Stephen Kenny, the results weren't as, as good as they might have been? That that has had a, an effect on the perception of the League of Ireland as a, as a potential for... You know the top job in, in the country. Yeah, look, I think with Stephen, it, it was small margins, and people outside of football probably think that's an excuse. But I really think it was small margins in big games, um, and people that don't follow football will definitely, um, if it was another manager from the league, would definitely have a negative opinion on that. And I understand that, um, and I think a lot of people would understand that. You know, it's um, but it doesn't go to say that. That, uh, we haven't got top managers within the league and top young coaches that are, are learning the trade and will be top managers So, uh, but I do understand people's opinions and people's views that um, it, it shouldn't be or it can't be another manager from the league right now and I'm ok with that There was a, a point at which uh, you were heavily linked with Lincoln uh, and other clubs perhaps were interested in, in, in taking you and perhaps members of your staff on as well uh, and you stuck with Shamrock Rovers are you happy with the support you've got from the club? Yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm in no rush. I'm, I'm a young manager. Um, I've made no secret that I want to manage at the highest level possible. But I want to do it my way. And, and, um, and, and when the right opportunity comes at the right time, we'll obviously speak and, and sit down and have that conversation. But uh, right now, like I said, it's about me learning and, and becoming better every day. Um, I'm in no rush to do anything. Um, yeah, and I'm happy, like I said, that the squad's in a good place. Um, and, and I like where we are as a, as a group. So, I'm is happy it hard, though, Stephen, to, to guard against? Compl is it important to guard against complacency um, as a club as well as as a, a group of players and staff? One hundred percent. Yeah, you're right. That's what we have to guard against as as a as a whole club, not just a group of players, but fans, uh, board, staff, everybody. Um, winning is not easy, um, and it takes showing up every day, all year, and. and um, yeah, 100% right. We have to as a club, and like I said, I include the fans in that. You have to understand every game is hard to win, and we and we can't take that for granted. We've no divine right to show up at any ground, uh, and think we we just have to show up to win a football game. We're not good enough to do that. Um, as players, as staff, uh, as a club in general, no one's good enough to do that. So uh, that that is the big, the big uh, sort of question mark over when you've been successful. Um, can you keep that hunger, maintain that hunger? And that's as a club, so yeah, definitely we, we've got to guard against that complacency setting in that we just deserve to win. How do you view the league in general? I mean, before you came in as head coach here, uh, look at the way the Tallah Stadium was, look at the way the, the standard of the league was, the contract situation. There's been a lot of improvements. Yeah, we're definitely going the right way, there's no doubt about that. I think when I came in here, we had an average of just over 1,100, and now our average is, I'm nearly sure, 6,500. Um, and we're hoping to build on that again and, and then you look around the league and, and crowds are up throughout the league and it's brilliant to see uh, I think the league is stronger uh, as a whole I think there's really really good players in the league uh, spread throughout the league um, we all know what we want uh, from government we all know what we need to take the league to the next level and uh, I think the Ailey Mount got passed yesterday which is a positive for the league Sligo are working hard on their stadium hopefully Finn Harps get theirs and, and um, as many stadiums we can get up to the level as possible can only be good for the league so uh, we're definitely going the right way but we, we definitely need help from, from outside From a personal point of view Stephen like, it's well known that your, your son Josh has had many challenges in the last number of years would that be one of the reasons that you, you 
decided to stay in the country? Yeah, look, it's definitely part of the thinking. Uh, Josh and my family are, are the number one um, and always will be. So um, Josh's treatment is going really, really well at the moment. Um, he, hopefully he's finished his treatment at the end of the year and, and then it's time to sit down and have a look at things. But that has definitely played a part in, in the thinking. Um, it hasn't been the overriding factor, but it's definitely played a part. In, and like I said, um, if we get to the end of the year and Josh has to go through more treatment, uh, so we, you know, we, we'll face that when it comes. But he's played a, his own part in the in the club's success as well. I think it's almost been a, an extra motivation for the lads at times, hasn't it? Yeah, the players are incredible. When it happened, I spoke about it. They really were because I was a, f- a bit afraid to give them all of the information because it's it's heavy. It's a lot of uh, it's heavy baggage to carry around, and, and and the players have been incredible. They, uh, like you said, they came together and. Uh, and they, they made things happen for Josh as well and, and they've really made him feel part of, of the club and the group and, and the celebrations and I think that shows what an incredible group of people that we have here. And I believe you uh, were able to take a trip with him at Christmas? Yeah, we were lucky um, last year we couldn't go because he was really sick and, and uh, he was in the treatment but thankfully this year the hospital allowed us to go away and uh, it was amazing just to see him and, and his brother and sister just being kids and, and to anyone outside looking at Josh would never have said that he was sick and and, um, and that was an incredible feeling to see him just being a nine year old kid and, and having fun and, and uh, it really makes you uh, check yourself and understand that that's what's really important in life Well we started again uh, on Friday, uh, you're home to, to Dundalk who present a, a, a difficult challenge no doubt uh, with the new stand and everything it really feels like a you know, turning over a new leaf, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It's brilliant. I had to check myself a few times on Friday, looking to my left and seeing the stand. It was, it was amazing to look down and see it. And, uh, when I started as a player here against Sligo, uh, you think back to that night and where we are now as a club, it's brilliant. Um, but we, like you said earlier, we have to remember that we have no divine right to win any game, any league, any cup. And on Dock, we're going to be a tough team. Everyone's talking about uh, the squad and the changes. I know Stephen and Patrick really well. I lived with them. The t- two really good football people that know the game and they love having their backs against the walls and, and proving people wrong so I've no doubt Dundalk are going to be a, a really really tough team on Friday night Well on a personal level we wish you nothing but the best for yourself Josh and the family and uh, good luck with the season Thanks very much Tony. thank you